All right, Facebook. It's been a while since I've done this, so I'm trying to get this set up the right way. All right. Well, I see two of you on. But I don't know what two of you, who you are. Oh, wait, now I see things. It's been a while since I've done the Ad 8. All right, there. All right, all right, all right. A couple more getting on, a couple more. I'm going to wait a little, just a, a few minutes just to get everyone on, get everyone on. It's hard to jump right on at 8 because I know not everyone's up and watching yet. And um, yeah, so I just want to give it a few more minutes. Now I'm going to give it 60 seconds so we're jumping in. All right, good morning, Ardith. Good morning, Deb and everyone else watching. Hi, Sandy. Good morning, Emily. <clears throat> it's so crazy to be back at, at eight. I'm not used to this yet, so I'm going to get used to it here. Good morning, Karen. Ooh, from up north. All right. Well, I'm going to get started. Good morning, Erica. Good morning, Michelle and Chad. Um, hey, at, our at eights for the month of October. Hence, October has 31 days. Our at eights are journeying through the book of Proverbs because Proverbs has 31 chapters. So it just works out perfectly. That's why we chose it. Um, so we are on every single day. Whatever the day is relates to the chapter. So today is, um, what is today? The 7th. So we're on Proverbs 7 today. And uh, so we're going to work through Proverbs through the month of October and then after October, we're going to take November off. And then right after Thanksgiving, uh, we're going to start an Advent at 8. So just to give you a heads up for the rest of the year, that's what it's going to look like for our Ad 8s. But um, let me give a little background. I know some, some of us at Radiant Life uh, that have done their Ad 8s, I think I'm the last one that hasn't done an Ad 8 yet, um, has given some background on Proverbs. But um, there's a major theme in the book of Proverbs. If you haven't noticed yet, it's wisdom, 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 wisdom. Now, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is about having facts. Wisdom, though, is actually applying that, applying knowledge in your life now. When to use it, when not to use it type thing. So there's a big difference there between knowledge and wisdom. I think a lot of times in our culture, we blend the two. They're different. Knowledge is more about facts. Wisdom is more about appropriately applying the knowledge in life now. So there's a big difference there. Um, the book of Proverbs is a beautiful thing. There is a ton in every chapter. So we're going to look at Proverbs chapter seven. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to highlight something that jumped out to me. Because um, if you read Proverbs chapter seven today at all, you're going to get into a lot of seductive, adulterous women chapter. And I'm like, awesome. That's the chapter I get to talk about. Seduct seductive women. Like, yay. But uh, I think the first five verses in chapter seven is what spoke to me the most. And that's what I'm going to bring to you this morning. So far, chapters one through six, I don't know if you've noticed the major theme, but again, it's been wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. And so let me just read to you the first five uh, verses in Proverbs chapter seven. This is what really hit home for me, and I hope it hits home for you this morning. It says this, my son, keep my words, store up my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and to insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman and the wayward woman with her seductive words. Now, is this whole chapter just talking about seductive women? No. Um, this whole chapter is the idea of applying wisdom in our life so we can stay away. Major focus is sexual immorality here. Um, but there's so many other aspects that we can journey on. Um, here's a major thing, though. Uh, how many times did you notice in the first five verses something about protection or guarding. Now let me read these words that jumped off to me in the first five verses. Keep my words, so you got keep. Store up my commands, we have keep and store. 
keep my commands is another keep, guard my teachings, bind them on your fingers. So constantly always be aware of them. Write it on your heart. There's like the sixth thing. Um, so think about that. Keeping God's commands, guarding it, God's commands, binding them on your fingers, writing them on your hearts over and over. The writer of Proverbs chapter seven, which is King Solomon, one of the wisest kings to ever live, even though he's one of the most hated in Jewish history because under his reign, Israel divided into the Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom, but he was a very wise king. So what's the importance of wisdom? What is the first five verses getting at? The first five verses is getting at is how deeply you and I need wisdom. Now, it's not just needing wisdom because the best wisdom is useless against all temptation unless you take it to heart and make it a habit in your life. Now, let me repeat that because I wrote it down on my sticky note for you all. I'm going to repeat it. The best wisdom is use, useless against temptation, against the things that come into your heart and come into your mind, things that trials and temptations that you face. It's useful, useless unless it's taken to heart and put into habits. You and I must take wisdom and take it to heart. Put it into practice. It's one thing just to sit there and go, hey, that's nice. Um, that's a good idea. But it's another thing, as the writer of Proverbs chapter 7 says, guard it, keep it. Guard it, keep it. Guard it, keep it. Write it on your heart. Write it on your heart. Get it there. Protect it at all costs. Now you sit there and you look throughout the, the rest of Proverbs and you'll understand wisdom is the major thing in the book of Proverbs. But here's what wisdom does also. Listen, wisdom just, wisdom doesn't keep you away from something. Wisdom draws you to something. And what wisdom draws you to is Jesus. It helps you be like Jesus. So guard it, protect it, do everything in your power to bind wisdom on your heart. Get it inside of you and put it into practice in daily habits in your life. Now, as I close, I want to say this. Every morning during my quiet time, it's about 45 minutes to an hour, I just get into God's word in my chair at home and I uh, do worship music, I journal, I pray, I read my, my portion of scripture twice in the morning. But during my prayer, I pray every single day for wisdom. Every day day I pray for wisdom. And then I'm, I, what I'm going to do, this is a challenge to myself. I need to start praying that I put it into practice. I don't just want wisdom. I have to get it into my heart and put it into a habit now. So that way I don't fall into temptation, whatever the temptation may be. Proverbs chapter seven is definitely talking about sexual uh, temptation from an adulterous woman. You can read the rest of, of it um, because it goes into a big drama, what happens. And then uh, at the end, it's like, hey, you got to protect wisdom at all costs. Protect it, protect it, protect it. So how do you guard and protect wisdom? Ask the Lord every day, God, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Not just knowledge, but help me to understand right and wrong. Not just to protect me for something, but draw me to something. And that drawing is you, God. It's you, Jesus. So let me pray. Father, may we be people marked by wisdom. I pray that, wisdom, that we would gain wisdom. That we really would gain wisdom. But I pray, God, that it wouldn't just stay there. I pray that we would put it into our heart. That we would keep it. We would guard it at all costs. And that we would make it a habit. When those tough decisions come, God, will you help us apply wisdom? When temptation comes our way, when at whatever trial we face, God, may we put into practice wisdom. You're not just trying to keep us from something. You're trying to draw us to something. And you're trying to draw us to your son, Jesus Christ. And wisdom helps that. Lord, may we be people full of wisdom. 
May you help us continue to journey and stay faithful journeying through the book of Proverbs. I pray at the end, by October 31, if we've read through basically the book of wisdom, the book of Proverbs, that we would be more, not just more knowledgeable, but we would be people with the gift of wisdom and we would be people that are discerning things and using wisdom every single day, knowing right from wrong, knowing how to, hey, this is a bad situation, I need to get out of it. God, may we be people of wisdom. May everything we do help us to be like you, Jesus. And we pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, stay in it. Proverbs chapter 7, finish it this afternoon. Read it. May you be full of wisdom. May you not just be full of wisdom. May you keep it. May you guard it. May it be on your heart. And may it get in here and we put it into practice. We have a habit of using wisdom in our life. Blessings to you guys. Have a fantastic Wednesday, October 7. And I personally will see you again at 8 next Wednesday. But stay tuned every day as we journey together through the book of Proverbs. Blessings to you guys.